In today's video, I'll be making a slightly improved version of this combination lock I made a while ago. And it's not a very hard project, you just have to be precise to make it work. And if you want to build it, uh, here are the plans for the mechanism. I have prepared this 24mm dowel and now I'll reduce some sections down to 14.5mm as shown in the plans. So I left these discs uh, 5 millimeters wide and even though in the plans I said that these parts need to be 5 millimeters wide as well, I left them about 6 millimeters wide so that I can fine tune them later. And now since this lathe is pretty primitive and it cannot hold a drill or a chuck, I'll need to set up a jig to drill the holes precisely in the middle of these parts. I attached this block of wood to the drill press table and drilled a 15 millimeter hole in it. And now if I place these things in here, uh, I should be able to drill directly into the center. I'll first drill a 15 millimeter hole that's around two millimeters deep. And then I'll drill a 10 millimeter hole all the way through. I'll now use a coping saw to cut a groove for the nail. You can use a Dremel or a scroll saw. Now, even though this is a wooden lock, I'd like to implement some security features. So, with my previous lock, this was very primitive. Uh, you can pick it by pulling on the shackle and then just rotating uh, each one of these wheels until you actually unlocked it. And let me explain why this happens. The way this lock works is it has three pins on the shackle and they usually rest on this edge right here. But when you put in the right combination, they line up with the gate. So now it can be pulled out. And by pulling on the shackle and rotating these things randomly, you'll eventually find the combination. So to prevent this, I'll try to implement some false gates. False gates are grooves, just like this one, but they're a lot more shallow and they don't go all the way through. So I'll try to use a Dremel for this. I'm not very experienced with the Dremel, but I'll try my best. And here you can see the false gate. And one last security feature, through these gaps, you'll probably be able to see where this gap is located. So I'll add another fake one on the other side that just like the false gate doesn't go all the way down and it is complete. So now I'll do the same for the other two pieces. I drilled these two holes in, in this cube to make the body of a lock. This, go, this 10 millimeter hole goes about halfway through and this 15 millimeter hole goes almost all the way through. There's about three millimeters left here. I will now round off the edges. You could use a router for this, but I'm too lazy to set up mine, so I'll just use a file. In order to put these into the lock, I'll need to break this into two pieces. I just hope everything goes according to plan. It didn't go exactly as I planned, but I think I can make this work. As you can see, it's still impossible to fit these pieces in, so I'll break off another chunk. I will now glue this piece back to the other side so that I once again have two pieces instead of three. I marked the grooves for the circular pieces to go in and now I'll try to very carefully cut them out on the bandsaw. As you can see they're very thin so I'll need to take it very slowly. Well, uh, apparently I wasn't careful enough. It's time to start from scratch.
So yeah, it just happened again. Um, and this time it was entirely due to my stupidity and laziness. You see, I uh, I was trying to widen the gap for this thing to fit in better. And I was making repeated cuts on the bandsaw. And it caught again. So, third time the charm, hopefully. You may be wondering why I didn't choose to make this lock out of plates. And that way I wouldn't have to break this thing in half. But I just really like the look of this lock being made out of a solid piece of wood. Slight change of plans, I wrapped some masking tape around this lock so that the two sides are better secured uh, to each other. So these pieces work pretty well now, uh, but as I said before, I left some extra wood when working on the lathe. And yeah, you can see that these parts extend a little too far out. So I have to sand them flush. So now we all fit properly, but I've noticed another problem, a mistake I made. Apparently when making the false gates, I accidentally cut them from both sides. So now I just have two entry points. I'll need to somehow close off one of them. I think I'll try to do that by gluing in a very tiny piece of wood right here. And here is the piece of wood I'll need to glue in. Uh, this 10 millimeter dowel will be the shackle of the lock and now I'm placing it in here and marking where the first spun needs to be. It needs to rest against this rim right here. You can go the easier way and make a square shackle, but I personally really like the round ones. So I'm gonna cut this out and then round it off with a file. Instead of gluing this part straight on like this, I'll make an L-shaped cut and that will provide more surface area for the glue. I have roughly cut out this top cover plate and you can see I made a little extra notch right here. And this way I'll be able to remove the shackle from the lock if I wanted to. And I'll glue it in such a way that you have to rotate the shackle 180 degrees to remove it. I will now temporarily glue the lock together and glue the top plate on to sand it flush with the lock. Now that all the pieces are assembled, I put in the combination and pull on the shackle all the way and mark on the other side where to cut. Now I can finally test it. So now it's locked. And now it's opened. To mark the numbers on the dials precisely, I wrap some masking tape around them and then I unwrap it. Uh, divide the distance by 10, mark the distances, and now I'm gonna wrap down the dial again and put the numbers near each dot. And now to make the other two dials, I'm just using the original dial as a reference. I should also mention that if you wanted to, you could make this lock with more than three dials, as many as you want. After some testing, I ensured that everything works and now I'll glue the, these two pieces together 
filling in these gaps uh, and then the cover plate too. Uh, you have to be really careful not to glue in these dowels accidentally. Everything is glued together now and fully finished. And now to put in the shackle, I put the combination on the back side of the lock. So now everything is lined up. I can put it in and lock it. Now it's locked. And now it's opened. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. If you did, make sure to stick around because in the near future, I plan on building another lock, uh, also a combination lock, that looks kind of like this. But anyways, thanks for watching.